Hi, I'm Rita Wilkins, also known as the Downsizing Designer. So a week ago, I posted a very simple question on Facebook. And to date, I've received over 2,000 responses. And that question was, what type of clutter gives you the most difficulty in letting go and why? So obviously I've got a lot of um, data um, that I want to um, consolidate and then write um, some blogs about, but I'm just asking you the question, um, what is the most difficult kind of clutter for you to get rid of and why? So there is a clutter crisis in America right now. Did you know that over 300,000 um, items are the average number of items in a home? That's a lot. So, and 11% of Americans um, use a storage unit to um, put their extra stuff. So it's not just in the garage, it's not just in the basement. Um, it's also now in storage units. And the average cost of a storage in the, a uni a unit in the United States is about $1,200. And that particular storage industry is a $38 billion industry. So we've got a lot to think about, and I guess my question to you is, what kind of, um, what are you going to do about your clutter, and is it time to let all of that stuff go and get your own life back? So every day when people ask me to help them solve their own clutter crisis, um, I go right to the fact that um, what you really have to do is to be honest with yourself and understand why you want to declutter. You know, what's the impact that it's having on your life? So 54% um, of Americans are overwhelmed by the amount of clutter they have in their home. 55% um, say that clutter is a huge source of stress and angst and arguments in their homes. And 33% hold on to stuff that they don't want, need, or use. So if you're dueling with this kind of clutter, um, in your own house, it is impacting not just your your um, home, it's impacting your health, your wealth, and also your relationships. It's costing you time, money, energy, and focus. So there's a lot of pain associated with um, living with clutter. Um, I'm creating a 10-step plan to win that battle, and you are welcome to go to my website, Rita Wilkins at RitaWilkins.com, and I'll be posting it. But just briefly, it's about creating a vision for what your life will look like when your home is no longer cluttered, when you can walk in that door um, after, after work or after going out, and then walking into a very peaceful, um, serene environment. It also has to do with willingness to do what it takes. Um, you know, so often you can say, well, I want to do something, but if you don't commit to it, it's going to be the same old, same old. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to just get worse. And then, of course, there's that age-old argument of things are on sale, um, you know, have to have it. So, obviously, if you want to reduce the amount of clutter in your home, you're going to have to stop buying more. And develop that mindset of asking yourself, why am I buying? Um, it's not easy and it's something I've always struggled with, but the more I do it, the easier it does get. And then of course, having a plan to declutter is so critical. Um, you know, without a plan, um, we kind of flounder. So putting some sort of a structure together about how you go about the decluttering in your home, um, going room to room, category by category, um, the burst method, whatever kind of de decluttering method you wanna use, um, I would strongly put that into your plan, know where you're going to be donating or disposing of things. Those are the kind of things that you wanna look at when you're creating your plan. And then the other thing that I strongly recommend is to ask for help. I think um, the job of decluttering an entire home is just a lot of work. And of course you can get overwhelmed, that's just human. Um, so when you ask your family, your friends, um, who are not necessarily, even, even professionals who aren't emotionally attached to your stuff, um, it's going to go a lot easier. And then also the thought of um, scheduling a decluttering session at least every week. Um, I actually declutter every single day. So it could just be one single drawer and I, you know, I open it up and it's gotten really messy. So it might take maybe five minutes, maybe 10, um, but it is a way to stay on top of it. 
Um, and then of course, I've probably told you this before, but decluttering or clutter is actually a deferred decision. So if you choose to um, put your clothes on the floor after you've taken them off or put them on a chair, that's a deferred decision. Um, by simply taking another second or two to either put it away or put it into the laundry, um, that will help prevent some of the clutter buildup. And also, um, one of the other things I'm going to be having in my 10-step ten, ten plan is a letting go muscle. Now, I've experienced this myself. It's a little bit like going to the gym on a regular basis or going once a week or once a month. You know, obviously, you know the results if you go several times a week. Um, and the same is true of decluttering. So the more you practice decluttering, um, the better your muscles, your letting go muscles get. Um, so if you don't need it, want it, you know you're not going to use it, just sell it, donate it, repurpose it, just get it out of your house. And then um, those of you that know me well know that my life has to have fun in it every single day. So decluttering can be fun. And one thing I've discovered is that it can also be very therapeutic. So we had an, a, a very rainy week last week and, you know, I had things that I wanted to do, but there were certainly times where I had very little to do. And I thought, well, let me just kind of, because I was bored. And I just started, you know, doing a little bit of decluttering here, a little. And I realized I, I actually felt so much better. It was therapeutic. So think of, um, there, um, it has therapy of sorts. Um, but when you have fun with decluttering, just make it a game. Um, laugh at yourself and wonder like, why did I ever keep this in the first place? Um, you know, think about the good memories, the, the not so good memories, all of those things, but, but make it a game with yourself and, and then get through it and just get it, get rid of it. And then of course the resiliency factor, um, you will get stuck. There's no doubt. And probably you're going to want to quit along the way. And you'll question even, why am I even doing this? But just go back to the reason that you want to declutter. Remember how it feels when you walk in your home. And it, right now, if it feels you know like chaos and the kitchen counter, the kitchen table, everything is just clutter, clutter, clutter. Um, think of those reasons, like why you want to declutter. And this will serve as a reminder to help you motivate and motivate yourself and to continue that journey. And then remember, this is a journey. It does not happen overnight. Um, if you look around your home, you realize that it's taken years probably to accumulate all of this clutter. So give yourself a break and um, be kind to yourself and say, this is a journey. It's going to take time. And it is a process. It's a commitment. And it does take courage um, to deal with clutter. So I assure you, though, that it will be a, a fight worth winning, and I wish you well.